Hi students, this is Dr. R. Balaji, Physics Faculty. Here I would like to give a lecture on uh, magnetic materials. In this video, I explain about uh, domain theory of ferromagnetism and a stasis curve. Now, we know uh, the diamagnetic materials you are explaining based on the orbiting of electron and uh, paramagnetic material you are explaining based on spin of the electron and ferromagnetic materials you are explaining based on domain theory. Now, Every ferromagnetic material is made of a very large number of small regions which are known as domains. So this is domain, this is domain, this is domain. So every ferromagnetic material is made of a very large number of small regions which are known as domains. The linear dimension of the domain is the order of 10 to 4 of minus 4 meters. Each domain contains 10 to 4 of 72, 10 to 4 of 21 atoms and, who, and uh, whose axes are align, align in the same direction. Now, let us consider this is a domain, uh, simple way. This is a ferromagnetic material. This material which is having uh, four domains. For understanding purpose, I am taking this picture. So, in particular domain, this is a small region in a ferromagnetic material. This small region is called domain and uh, the linear dimension of this domain is around 10 to 4 of minus 4 meters and uh, uh, each domain it contains each domain contains 10 to 4 of 17 to 10 to 4 of 21 atoms and the axis of uh, uh, the axis are aligned in the same direction so all spin magnetic moment vectors all spin magnetic moment vectors in a particular domain which are in the same direction whereas in other domains which are in some other direction right so at ordinary temperatures, these uh, domains are oriented in different directions. That's why the net magnetic moment value is equal to zero. So in the absence of external magnetic field and uh, at room temperature, the net magnetic moment value is equal to zero. So the ferromagnetic materials does not possessing any magnetic properties. Whenever you are applying the magnetic field, now these uh, spin magnetic moment vectors which are oriented along the applied field direction and it possessing a net magnetic moment and due to that the material behaves as a ferromagnetic material and when a magnetic field is applied then the magnetization occurs in two ways number one the moment of domain wall number two rotation of domain wall by the moment of domain wall by the moment of domain wall the moment of domain wall takes place at weak magnetic field the moment of domain wall which is takes place at a weak magnetic field due to this weak magnetic field the specimen uh, the magnetic moment increases and hence the boundary of domains are displaced so here there is a displaced of the wall in a domain so whenever it is a displaced its volume is also increases so by the moment of domain walls the moment of domain walls takes place in a weak magnetic field due to this weak field due to this weak field applied to the specimen the magnetic moment increases and hence the boundary of the domains are displaced so that the volume of the domain changes as shown in figure second one is rotation of domain walls rotation of domain walls takes place in strong magnetic field suppose the applied magnetic field is very strong then the rotation of domain walls are takes place when external field is high then magnetization changes by means of rotation of the direction of magnetization towards the direction of the applied field as shown in figure so whenever you are applied uh, the applied magnetic field is very high then intensity of magnetization is very high and here this is due to the rotation of the domain wall this domain wall this enter this is called domain this entire domain which is rotates this is rotates like this and it will comes in this manner and the field the the spin magnetic moment vector which is aligned along the applied field direction so in this way uh, when uh, a ferromagnetic material is placed in a magnetic field it is magnetized in two ways number one moment of domain wall number two rotation of domain wall moment of domain wall which is occurs at uh, a weak magnetic field and uh, here the volume of the domain changes and rotation of domain wall takes place at strong magnetic field and here 
uh, all domains are rotating along the applied field direction and the intensity of uh, intensity of magnetization is also increases this is a concept of um, domain theory of ferromagnetism so when we consider any ferromagnetic materials it consists of large number of small regions which are known as domains each domain linear dimension value is equal to 10 to 4 of minus uh, uh, 5 meters each domain contains 10 to 4 of 17 to 10 to 4 of 21 atoms and the use axis are aligned in the same direction and uh, in a particular domain all spin magnet moment vectors are in the same direction whereas in other domain which are in uh, some other direction at ordinary uh, room temper at ordinary temperatures and in the absence of magnetic field the net magnetic moment of the ferromagnetic materials is equal to zero and it does not possess any magnetic properties and whenever we are applying the magnetic field all um, spin magnetic moment vectors which are comes along the applied field direction that's why it, uh, the material as the material is possessing a maximum magnetic moment value so the material is behaves as a ferromagnetic material and it is having some intensity of magnetization and uh, when the magnetic material placed in a magnetic field the material is magnetized due to uh, moment of domain wall and the rotation of uh, domain walls the moment of domain wall which is occurs at a weak magnetic field and here the volume of the domain is changes the rotation of domain wall which is occurs at strong magnetic field and uh, here the intensity of magnetization is also increases now here we study about the hysteresis curve we discuss about hysteresis curve consider an unmagnetized ferromagnetic substance say iron bar in a magnetic field let us consider a let us consider iron bar and it is placed in a um, magnetic field and right when the bar is slowly when uh, when the magnetic field is slowly increased the variation of intensity of magnetization with respect to h which is shown in figure so here we consider uh, an unmagnetized ferromagnetic substance say iron in a magnetic field when the magnetic field is increases how the intensity of magnetization is varies that should be shown in this diagram now so here here this is uh, applied magnetic field intensity and this is intensity of magnetization so here we are considering an unmagnet uh, unmagnetized ferromagnetic material substance say iron and it is placed in the magnetic field whenever the magnetic field is increases due to the rotation of the spin magnetic moment vectors along the field direction the intensity of magnetization value is also increases and at this situation at this point say this point is a or some other at point a the intensity of magnetization is maximum it means all spin magnet moment vectors are comes along the applied field direction and the intensity of magnetization value is maximum this point is called saturation point suppose this applied magnetic field intensity you are making to decrease step by step then it does not follows the path ao it follows some other path called ab it does not follow the path ao right it follows the some other path that is called ab right at this point this is the point b at this point the field intensity value is equal to zero but it is having some intensity of magnetization here even the removing of applied magnetic field the material which is having some intensity of magnetization this magnetization is called residual magnetism and here ob is called retentivity ob is called retentivity now the magnetic field intensity you are making to decrease on negative side then uh, the curve which follows the path b c now at the point c what happens here the applied magnetic field value is negative but uh, the residual magnetism value becomes zero so here by applying of a particular force the residual magnetism in the magnetic material is completely removed that force is called corrosivity force and oc is known as corrosivity oc is called corrosivity further increasing of the field negative side accordingly the intensity of magnetization in on negative side is also increases at this position the intensity of magnetization value is maximum 
this is the symmetric uh, symmetrical to the point uh, a then further increasing of h it follows the path de and then it follows the path e a this loop this entire loop is called hysteresis loop this entire loop is called hysteresis loop so the meaning of hysteresis is nothing but lagging so throughout the process the i lags behind the h so this loop is called hysteresis loop the area of the loop explains the loss of energy to convert the material into magnetic material so the area of the loop is more it means the loss of hysteresis hysteresis loss is more it means to convert that material into magnetic material you must sub, you must maintain much more energy suppose this area is small the area hysteresis loss is less it indicates by supplying a small amount of energy the material is easily converted into magnetic material in this manner the given material how it is uh, and is it possible to convert it into magnetic material or not it should be studied through the hysteresis curve in case of para ferromagnetic materials it is appears in the form of dolphin shape but in case of paramagnetic materials it is appears in the form of straight line in case of paramagnetic materials it is appears in the form of straight line suppose uh, after doing some research work i have found one uh, material i don't know it is a magnetic material but it is i don't know it is whether it is a ferro or ferro then you draw the i h curve suppose the i h curve is appears uh, in the dolphin shape then you can say that the material is ferromagnetic material suppose the i h curve is appears in the form of straight line then you can say that it is a paramagnetic material in this way uh, you can uh, study about the properties of ferromagnetic materials of a given material by using this method so the here the loss uh, the loss of uh, hysteresis loss or the area of the loop we can calculate by using formula w is equal to mu not into integral h into di what is h into di that is the area of the loop integral h into di represents the area of the h i curve or the area of the b i curve so uh, the hysteresis loss value is depends upon the area of the loop hysteresis loss is depends upon the area of the loop the area is more then you it need much more energy to convert that material into magnetic material and it need much more energy to convert that material uh, demagnetize suppose the area is less then by supplying a small amount of energy it can easily magnetize and it can easily demagnetize that is advantage with uh, hysteresis curve thank you